Meeting call to order. 519, Madam Clerk, may I have roll call? Commissioner Ayon? Here. Commissioner Bruin? Absent. Commissioner Clark? Here. He's not on. Commissioner Couch? Here. Commissioner Flores? Here. Commissioner Fowler? Here. Commissioner Gonzalez? Absent. Commissioner McKibben? Present. Commissioner Zaragoza? Here. Roll call complete. Thank you. Um, we have uh, uh, Commissioner Flores to lead us, and please everybody stand and the Pledge of Allegiance. Sure. Okay, ready? Salute, pledge. I, I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Commissioner Flores. Thank you. Madam Clerk, do we have any any commissioner attending a video conference? No. Uh, commissioner Bruin was expected to be attending by video conference, uh, but apparently he hasn't jumped on yet. So if he jumps on later, we will have to come back to this item. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we'll move on to uh, item number four, approval approval of the minutes of of June 19, 2024. Uh, do we have any public comment? Seeing none, do we have any commissioner comments or questions? We have a motion. Fowler motion. Second. Uh, motion by Commissioner Fowler, second by Commissioner Couch. Uh, do, uh, roll call. Have a roll call, please. Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Yes. All ayes. Motion passed. Thank you. Moving on to item number five, public comment. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on the agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Madam Clerk, do we have anybody in for public comment? No. Okay, thank you. We're closing public comment. Moving on to uh, item number six, determination proceedings. We have none. Uh, moving on to the notice of public hearings. Uh, Mr. Schroeder? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to recuse myself on all three of those matters because the applicant is my client, and I'll just step out of the room now. Okay, thank you. We'll just wait until you exit the room. Starting with the 1832 Los Hills Utility District Sphere of Influence Amendment, consideration of proposed sphere of influence amendment to encompass the area presented in the co corresponding annexation area, uh, uh, preceding 1833 and properties currently being served by the district via contract with Berenda, Ber Berenda Mesa Water District for approval as required by GC 5648-28 CICA EIR and notice of exemption uh, Officer Knox, uh, your your report, please. Yeah. With the, with the permission of the chair, I'm going to make one presentation that covers the annexation, the sphere of influence amendment, and municipal service review for Lost Hills Utility District. At the end, there will be three separate recommendations and three votes. The Lost Hills Utility District has requested annexation for the purpose of supplying water and sewer to a new electric vehicle charging station roughly half a mile east of I-5 on Highway 46. It's an area that I'm very familiar with. As this pr uh, proposed annexation will also require a sphere of influence modification, the staff has requested Lost Hills Utility District bring into the sphere of influence several properties that the district serves via a contract with Berenda Mesa Water District. These are scattered west of the community of Lost Hills along Highway 46. Uh, there will be no change in zoning associated with this formation. 
is consistent with the general plan, regional transportation plan, or specific plan. There is no ag land conversion. It's consistent with commission policies and conforms to the assessor's parcels. The district boundaries, over, boundaries overlap with Lost Hills Water District and Kern County Water Agency. Neither provide sewer or water for municipal services. Annexation will lead to additional water use. The municipal service review addresses the additional usage and it is within the water allotment the district has as part of the groundwater sustainability plan for the area, which is managed by Semi-Tropic Water Storage District. The California Environmental Quality Act was determined to require an EIR on the annexation and sphere of influence with the district as lead agency. An MSR is handled with a notice of exemption with LAFCO as lead agency. We have received an identification agreement and affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and comments were provided and included in the report and recommendation. The sphere of influence is proposed to be expanded to cover the proposed annexation as well as the property served under the contract with Berenda Mesa Water District. There is no anticipation of future growth of the district to provide services outside the proposed boundary. It is recommended that on 1833, the annex, uh, I have this backwards. 18, on 1833, the annexation is recommended that the commission review the environmental document and adopt all relevant mitigation measures regarding annexation as outlined in the monitoring and mitigation plan and contingent on the sphere of influence expansion. It is further recommended that the commission approve the annexation number 21 to the Lost Hills Utility District with the requirement of notice, hearing, and protest hearing be waived and subject to conditions recommended by the executive officer. Thank you. Uh, do we have any public comment regarding this? Seeing none. Uh, do we have any commissioner comments or questions regarding this item? Seeing none, do I have a motion to approve? Motion. Second. Motion by Commissioner Couch, uh, second by Commissioner Flores. Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Which one are we speaking? On A. 1833. 1833. Then we're going to proceed to move. To the sphere of influence yeah. and then the MSR. Okay. Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Bruin? We can't do anything until Tom comes back in, so we'll handle okay. that when this is over. Okay. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. All ayes, motion passed. Okay, thank you. Moving on to B, 1833 Los Hills Utility District Annexation Number 21. That's what we just did. Right. So we're just voting on... The next one is the sphere of influence, right. and it's recommended that the commission consider the environmental document prepared by the district and approve the sphere amendment to Lost Hills Utility District with condition recommended by the executive officer. Okay, do I have, do have any public comment regarding that item? Do you have any commissioner comments or questions on this item? Do I have a motion for approval to approve? Fowler, motion to approve. Second, Clark. Motion by Commissioner Fowler, second by Commissioner Clark. Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Zaragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Okay. And then we have the, M the, the Municipal Service Review. Yeah. And, right. and the recommendation is to adopt by resolution proceeding number 1834, the Lost Hills Utility District Municipal Service Review, along with the environmental document. Okay, do we have any public comment regarding this, that, the item? Seeing none. Any commissioner questions or concerns regarding item C? Motion. Seeing none, do I have a motion? Motion. Second, Flores. Motion by Commissioner uh, Couch, second by Commissioner Fowler. Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. 
Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on to Commissioner uh, Commission items. Oh, let me, uh, let's wait for Tom to come back into the room before we go into number eight. And then Commissioner Bruin is now online. Okay. So then we gotta, we actually gotta go back to number three. Correct. And then, okay, and then vote on it. Commissioner Bruin is now online. Commissioner Bruin is now online. So we have to go back to that item. <clears throat> okay. Can you check and see whether he can hear us? And we can hear he needs him. to. He needs to. Um, first of all, you need to uh, approve his request to appear virtually. We need a motion and a, and and a, a second. vote, right? Yeah. But we don't know if he could hear us or we. He also needs to tell you why he's asking to, to appear virtually. But I think we know it's because he has the Ridgecrest yeah. City, City Council, Council meeting tonight. Not? Yes. Yeah. And who else is in the room with him? Yeah, I want to get a, an approval first of all. Okay. Yeah. Mayor Bruin, can you hear us? Should we just get the approval now before? Okay. Do we have a? Uh, do we have any public comment regarding uh, Commissioner Bruin being on a video conference? Seeing none, do we have any commissioner comments or questions regarding him being on a uh, video conference? Motion to approve his attending the meeting by virtual conference. attendance. Yeah. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Fowler, second by Commissioner Couch. Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Ion? Aye. Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Saragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. We also need to know, from, we need to hear from him right. that there's no one in the room with him or if there's, if there's an adult in the room with him, what his relationship to that adult is. Mayor Bruin, can you hear us? Can you hear him? He's, He's on. on. I can't hear anything, but I see him. Yeah. I see him. Yeah. No. Can he text his answer? I believe he might have, uh, but he gave a thumbs up he, earlier. He typed in here. Yeah, check the chat. Uh, that he, he can't hear you, uh, we just can't hear him. So he typed in that he can't hear us, uh, we just can't hear him for some reason. Okay, can he retype if, is there, if is, is there an adult or anywhere else in the room with him? An adult? Yeah. I think he's typing now. To confirm, no one is in the room with him. Nobody. 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 Thank you. Good to go. Okay, moving on to uh, number eight, commission yeah. items. Yes. Yeah, we're done with the Lost Hills. At least. <laughs> so, um, for the commission items, uh, we'd like to uh, appoint uh, Mr. Flores to the budget committee. Yeah, is that the at your at the at the chairs? Pleasure to who goes on what committee and yes. th that there's a spot open on the budget committee. Yeah, I already, he, uh, I already spoke to Jeff Flores and he's good with it. Sure, happy to accept. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, being part of the committee. Second, um, I spoke to to Mr. Knox regarding, uh, I don't know how other commissioners feel, but I think for our meetings, I, I, I personally would like to have an invocation. I don't see anything. Uh, I don't see invocation for the beginning of our meeting, and, and we do it for our city council meeting. I don't know if any commissioners have questions or concerns regarding for the, for the future meetings. I think it's good. 
we could use all the help we could get. <laughs> how, how exactly do you want to do that? Um, there's multiple ways you can go about, about it. The Board of Supervisors has a moment of silence um, <coughs> that they use. Others bring in pastors uh, that come in and give, give a prayer. Um, we, I'm not really interested in going and searching for pastors to, yeah. <laughs> and clergy to go. Us as commissioners, as elected officials, I think we could come up with a prayer, find a prayer if, the, if anybody doesn't have a problem with it, with, any, with it. I think it's good to have God in our life and pray for us. That's just my opinion. Any other questions? Um, I concur. <laughs> this is, there it goes, the commission. Pastor, I want to see one I will in the next meeting. I will have one. Okay. And then we could do it at, even after the pledge or before the pledge. We could bow our heads and go from there. Typically, so. it's God before country. Let's go. I'm good with it. The commissioners, any other questions, concerns? I will put it on the agenda next month. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Appreciate it. Okay, moving on to number uh, nine, general business. Approval of a monthly expense list, number 24-06. Um, do we have uh, commission comments or questions? Do we have a motion? motion. So moved, Clark. Second, Couch. Motion by Commissioner Clark, second by Commissioner Couch. Madam Clerk, may I have roll call? Commissioner Ayon? Aye. Your head. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> shirt off. Yes. Shirt off the screen. Couch. Yes. yes. <laughs> Commissioner Flores. Yes. <laughs> Commissioner Fowler. Yes. Commissioner McKibben. Yes. Commissioner Zaragoza. Aye. All ayes. Motion passed. Thank you. Moving on to B. Approval of monthly expense list number twenty four dash zero seven. Do you have any commissioner comments or, or questions regarding that expense list? Do we have a motion? So moved, Clark. Second, Fowler. Motion by Commissioner Clark, second by Commissioner Fowler. Uh, Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Young? Aye. Commissioner Bruin? Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Zell goes up. Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on to see LAFCO shared resource agreement continue. Mr. Knox. Uh, at the last commission meeting, I asked for guidance in determining whether to pursue modifications to a shared resource agreement with other LAFCOs. Your guidance was to not spend more than a couple of hours of Mr. Schroeder's time. Uh, with that guidance, Mr. Schroeder and I set up a meeting with the EOs of Moran and Santa Cruz uh, LAFCOs. Out of that meeting were some takeaways I will I'll let Mr. Schroeder explain and provide the reasoning behind the recommendation to not move forward with the agreement. Mr. Schroeder? Yeah, yeah this is an agreement that uh, Marin and Santa Cruz LAFCOs have entered into. They're very happy with it. They get along well. Whatever uh, help and assistance one can give to the other, I guess it, they get it worked out. But in the, in the four corners of the agreement, it doesn't, doesn't tell you what the terms are. In fact, the capitalized terms, the defined terms, are not defined. You don't know who the interested LAFCO is in one particular case or who the supporting LAFCO is. Uh, they're just a number, and Commissioner Fowler pointed out a problem that early on. When, who do you pay and when do you pay? And how much do you pay? And it, in the telephone conversation we had with them, it seemed like this agreement was more designed to find out who was willing to participate in this kind of process. And if you needed assistance, you could call one of these people and you could work out your own deal. So I, I wouldn't recommend getting into this agreement, but I would recommend letting, having Blair advise them that he's interested in being a part of that process. And we could always work out a, a very simple arrangement. So I would recommend not, not getting into it. With a standalone contract between the two agencies? Exactly. No, not getting into the standalone contract. Not in the current contract that we're looking at? That's right. Correct. That's right. Okay. 
So it's my recommendation not to pursue the uh, shared resource agreement at this time. Okay, thank you, Mr. Knox. Do we have any public comment regarding this item? Seeing none. Any commissioner comments or questions? Okay, do I have a motion? Uh, okay, no, no, uh, no vote required. Yeah. Motion to deny that then. Okay. Do I have a second? Is this a motion to deny yes. the agreement? Yes. Second, Fowler. Okay. Uh, I have a motion by Commissioner Fa uh, Flores to deny and second by Commissioner Fa uh, Fowler. Madam Clerk, may I have roll call? Commissioner Young? Aye. Commissioner Bruin? Commissioner Clark? Just one question. If we're voting no, are we also then giving direction to staff to do what Blair w had suggested? Comes up, if that opportunity comes up, he, he would then come to you for uh, the agreement he's put okay. together with the, the other good. last Yes. Couple. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Zaragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Moving on to ND. Grand jury response to in your current community service district report, Mr. Knox. The Kern County Grand Jury has completed a report on the in your current community service district, identifying numerous management and infrastructure deficiencies. The grand jury recommends consolidation or merger, merging the in your current CSD with another district which would necessitate action by the Kern Local Agency Formation Commission. Consequently, the grand jury has requested a response from Kern LAFCO. Including the packet are the grand jury report and a draft response. The response outlines a detailed pathway towards conducting a feasibility study, providing substantial information to support this process of determining the best route forward. So why a feasibility study? A LAFCO feasibility study is a comprehensive analysis conducted by LAFCO to evaluate the practical and impl implications of forming a new local government agency or reorganizing existing ones. These studies are essential for ensuring that any proposed changes will lead to efficient uh, service delivery. The study typically includes an assessment of service needs, financial analysis, impact on existing agencies, and environmental considerations. With that, it, I uh, recommend approve of the grand jury response letter to, as written. Okay, thank you, Mr. Knox. Do we have any public comment? Seeing none. Do we have any commissioner comments or questions, Mr. Knox? Um, Mr. Zaragoza, Commissioner Zaragoza. Um, in light of what's going on, what do you think is going to happen next? <laughs> So I, I, I actually found out earlier today, um, the state water uh, um, put an order on the district to come back with them with recommendations of how they're going to fix the problems there. They did not send the state any response. So at this point, they are further in noncompliance with the state, um, state water board. So it's now on the State Water Board's, you know, it's, th it's their turn to step up and decide what's next. Um, I, my hope is that they would likely come in and take over the district for a short period of time um, and try to work out some of these issues uh, and help us in the process of doing a feasibility study. Um, of course, feasibility study is going to require a consultant to do and it's going to be, have considerable cost. The reason I want the state to step in is because they'll pay for it. So that, that makes it easier on, on us to, to, to be able to move forward. Oh, it makes perfect sense. In light of what's going on, how are the residents, water service or services quality wise, are they receiving services or not? It's intermittent. Um, they have two wells that they operate from. At one point, uh, both of them were down about a month ago, and they were receiving water, and I'll get into this on another item, but they received water from Indian Wells uh, Water District, Indian Wells Valley Water District. 
Um, so they have had considerable problems. Um, they also haven't completed an audit. They haven't, there's just a ton of things that they have not done as a agency that is required of any public agency. So last, last question, how many connections does this? Involve? About 245. So it's it's pretty small, right? <clears throat> but you know, if you live in that area and your water service is compromised, especially if you have children, that's that's a pretty difficult situation. The only reason I I think I read the paper about maybe a week ago, no, a month ago, time flies. About that hap, there's a lot of water problems in the Central Valley. Obviously, this is Eastern Kern. And one agency that seems to be stepped up to help out is called Self Help Self Help Enterprises. Mm -hmm. I believe they're out of Icelia. Do you know if that would be a, a positive thing if they could make connection or have any kind of relationship? I'm thinking out loud for what could possibly be done for that area of Kern County. We w we have worked with Self Help on a number of projects, including Weldon, the the, the water district we formed up in Kern, Kern, Kern River Valley. Um, we have other ones we're working on them with Fraser Park. We have one in the south south end of Bakersfield, off White Lane. Um, they're putting a sewer in system in with state money. They're helping with that. In exchange, they're going to be coming into the city of Bakersfield. Um, so we we've been working on that project for what two three years now. Oh. Yeah, um, self help is not fast but they are they are helpful uh, so that is is an option available to them uh, the district for the first time in my knowledge has finally hired an attorney to help them um, so that's that's at least they have some guidance from someone who has some experience with special districts okay uh commissioner fowler has a question or comment does the state water authority have uh, legal law enforcement uh, ability to they do. drop the hammer? They do. Um, that was given to them several years ago. We dealt with that recently with North Edwards Water District. Um, the state came in and ran them for about a year. Um, there was a lawsuit between them and uh, Antelope Valley uh, East Kern Water Agency and a contractor that was going to build a pipeline which they didn't pay for and got sued and they, so they owed several millions millions of dollars and so the state had to come in and take them over for a while and sort all that out so we've been through a little bit of that before we've done an ex we did an extension of services for north edwards during that time uh the state <laughs> the state uh was in agreement that they were going to take that area that they extended the service to to annex and they walked away and now the district doesn't have the money to do the annexation. So <laughs> I, I, I'm, not, I'm not always the biggest fan of the state, state water folks. Um, I ran into them in the oil industry as well. Um, not always the, but right now they're the ones with the funds to do something. So thank you. that's why, it, why you have to kind of look towards them for this kind of project. Any other questions, comments regarding this item? Do I have a motion to approve Officer Knox's report for the grand jury response? Fowler, motion to approve uh, the grand jury response. Second, Flores. I have a motion by Commissioner Fowler, second by Commissioner Flores. Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner, are you on? Aye. Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Zaragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you. Moving on to uh, item E, Indian Wells Valley Water District Emergency Extension of Service. This is to receive a fi receive and file. Mr. Knox? Uh, oh, Commissioner Bruin may be able to speak now. Okay. 
maybe. And we're not hearing him. Okay. I think the thumbs up or thumbs down worked perfect. Yeah, now we're not seeing him either. Is yeah. he is that is that him? He turned his off, his off. Okay. Yeah. Commissioner Bruin will have to see you to know Okay. We'll have to see you in order to know whether you're voting up or down. <sighs> Sorry, you said you mentioned we're at Indian Wells Valley Water District Emergency Extension of Services. That's Good. correct. Speaking of Inyo Kern CSD, the district recently had water outages that required water delivery from nearby Indian Wells Valley Water District. When the matter came to LAFCO's attention, the general manager of Indian Wells Water District was informed that they are required to get permission from LAFCO before providing services outside their boundary when there is a health and safety issue. Unaware of the provision in state law, the general manager agreed and sent a complete form request letter later that day. With the uh, power provided by, to the executive officer by the commission, I was able to verbally approve the out of boundary service agreement within an hour and a written approval later uh, that day. Uh, it's my recommendation to receive and file this item. Okay, thank you. Moving on to the East Niles Community Service District Emergency Extension of Service. Yeah, unlike Indian Wells Valley Water District, East Niles Community Service District was not inclined to complete an out of boundary approval. Uh, application when notified the district is required to, re to receive approval when providing services outside the district boundary. In this case, water was provided to Victory Mutual Water Company, a private water provider in unincorporated East Bakersfield. At a later date, legal counsel for East Niles was informed of the situation, but no response was ever received from him either. The only way to, to enforce this provision uh, when approval is not requested would be to go to the court and demand an injunction to cease and desist order be placed against the district. By the time an injunction would go through the court process, the problem would likely be fixed and services would no longer be provided, uh, extension of service no longer be provided. It should be noted that there is not any intention to slow or stop the provision of a district helping another neighbor. The application is two pages and takes less than 10 minutes to complete. In the case of Indian Wells Valley, when I received the application, I gave verbal approval within the hour and later day sent them the letter. Again, this is uh, informational. Um, there's no action needed of, on behalf of the commission. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on to uh, workplace violence prevention plan. Not. A draft of the workplace uh, violence prevention plan is included in your packet is a new requirement of nearly all employers in the state of California. In our circumstance, the plan applies to both staff and board members. The workplace violence prevention plan is being integrated in both the employee handbook and the commissioner handbook, and a new version of the handbook will be sent to you in the near future. And again, this is informational. Okay, moving on to the city of Bakersfield South Railroad, number one annexation withdrawal. Yes, the city of Bakersfield has submitted a withdrawal of a proposed annexation on South Rail Road for the second time. The city and county have been working on their housing inventory for arena compliance, that's the regional housing, that includes areas of Metro Bakersfield that both want to claim in their inventory. LAFCO has tried to bring both sides to the table and work out an agreement. Monday I was informed that a deal had been reached, but I've been told that a deal has been reached two times before. So I'm gonna wait till the ink is dry before I actually believe that, that we have a deal uh, that's gonna allow several annexations to go forward. Currently we have over half a dozen that are waiting for this agreement to, to go through so we can continue to process them and bring them to, uh, before the commission. It should also be noted that the commission does not need to act on the withdrawal. As executive officer, I accept the withdrawal and inform the commission, which I'm doing now. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to CSDA mid-year mid legislative report, Mr. Knox. Yes, the California Special District Association Legislative Committee, which I serve on, continues to work on legislation as we approach the end of this two-year session. There are many bills that, how do I put this, are ridiculous. Uh, my favorite would require all public agencies to get every gate inspected. Uh, you'd have to imagine how many gates that would be uh, because nobody actually knows how many gates there are in cities, counties, and special districts. 
Luckily, the bill died in committee on Monday, so we don't have to deal with that anymore. Uh, someone came to their senses. One bill specifically to LAFCO uh, has to do with indemnification. For those of you who have been around a while, San Luis Obispo County LAFCO was sued and lost, oh, lost over their in, indemnification agreement, which would require not only indemnification from third parties, but also from the applicant themselves. The bill, as currently written, would indemnify against any litigation. That's all. I know how Tom feels about that. I pointed this out to CSA Ledge Committee and nobody seemed to be concerned. Bottom line, this laugh code will not need to modify our indemnification agreement going forward. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Moving on to our LAFCO website. Are you able to get it yeah. to come up? Yay. Over the years, it has not been unusual to hear from a constituent that they were trying to find information on our web page, but couldn't find what they were looking for. Likely because it wasn't there because of the site was so, we were using through the county was so limited. The website has been a goal for your entire staff for years. So without delay, here's a preview of the site. Uh, as you might expect, we start with the home page. The intended use does not, does not call for our site to be cutting edge, but rather to provide a person coming to the site a format that they find familiar and easy to na na navigate. We have pull down menus, quick links, and basic information. I'm not gonna go through every feature, but I want to point out one area that is a focus. We have a box here towards the bottom that says, I received a notice of hearing, what's next? That's a big piece of how we communicate with the public. Uh, many people who contact, have, contact us have questions about the process of what happens and how they get information and when and where they can participate. This section puts the process in language that is, that is basic and as non-governmental or non-legalese as we can make it. And yes, uh, there isn't access to protest forms in several places. So if you go to ha County Protest, you can get to the protest forms very quickly. I know Commissioner Fowler was interested in that, in that section. So what are we trying to accomplish with the website? Uh, one is compliance. There are several requirements for posting materials, everything from posting agendas to budgets to hearing notices uh, to minutes. Uh, also important is ADA compliance, as there are those who like to sue anyone who might even have a small issue with their site. Second is education. Most people I run to have never heard of LAFCO or don't really understand the purpose of the agency. So there's a broad scope explaining what LAFCO does. For those who are more familiar with LAFCO, there's a technical information written very speci specifically for their use. There are also opportunities to educate our partner agencies and their extended organizations by both what we do and how the process needs to be completed. The LAFCO 101 video, which is on here somewhere, right? Yeah. Which we did a couple, couple months ago uh, is, is a start. Third, property owners and registered voters. When a notice is sent out to property owners or registered voters, they need a place to gather information that they can consume on their own time. This is a start. We want to get the basics down before moving on to more complex uses of the site. Eventually, I would like to see our maps available in GIS where the public can see any city or special district boundary. This would be part of the county GIS system and not a standalone GIS site. The county surveyor and many staffs and public work would li very much like to have our, uh, that information available to them in the work that they do. So they're very much interested in, in moving forward with this. Uh, while the entire staff is contributing, you might be surprised that the majority of the development of the site was accomplished by Rebecca Moore, who by her own admission is the least techie of our staff. So it's been, it's been kind of fun to watch her help, help put this together. And uh, I also cannot finish without recognizing the generosity of the county for hosting our webpage since the beginning of web pages, probably about 30 years ago. Both ITS it help looks desk. Like it's Thirty years old. Yeah. <laughs> Not this one. Yes. 
Because uh, I'm comparing, I'm comparing. Yes, both ITS, help desk, and the clerk of the board have been very generous with the site and staff time over the years. If you have questions or suggestions about the site, we would love to hear your feedback from you. And again, this is informational. Looks great. Uh, do we have any commissioner comments, questions regarding the website? Ms. Commissioner Fowler, I think. It's very pretty. <laughs> That's important, the first step. But I'd like congruence between various parts of the site. Kern Lafco with the, zero, the O being a small O or a large O. It's, you have it different, you know, a number sure. of different ways. Mm -hmm. But uh, can that be sent to us so we can get a closer look at it? I'd like to receive yes. it and please thank Rebecca Moore for her efforts. She does more than make peanut brittle. Yes, she does. She really does. <laughs> thank, thank you, Ms. Fowler. Commissioner Saragosa. Um, I wanted to uh, commend staff. Uh, this is my second term as a commissioner. The first term, uh, I think this was a discussion item. And uh, now that uh, we finally have a draft, it looks good. Um, I know it's a you mentioned that, that there is another phase, more complicated phase, but some of the LAFCOs in, current, not current, in California additionally have not only the um, boundary maps, but they also have an interactive GIS site, which means you can actually uh, download data, either in a shapefile or demographic format, X, Excel, and you can kind of look up, you know, pump punch in your, your address, it tells you what districts you're in and, and whatnot. And it's kind of cool. And uh, it's public information, but obviously it's going to require some advanced uh, geospatial technology. I'm not sure if that's a consultant type thing or if you can do it in house. But uh, if that could be done in the next near future, that'd be great. I'm going to let Mr. Rice respond to that. <laughs> uh, we are working on that as, as we speak uh, between the applications. Of course, the applications take priority, but in the background, I am doing all the geospatial work, putting a lot of that together and working, I'm gonna be working with the county and I'm actually gonna be hosting a lot of it on the county uh, since they already have their GIS up and running. That way there's uh, consistency between the two and then just layer, put our layers onto the, the county website. So they would like that uh, because they want our information anyway. Uh, as far as data downloads and everything, yes. Uh, the little area that we were looking at that has maps and all this, that will also include data download, shape files, uh, XML, whatever they need. So, yeah, it, it has multiple. It has multiple purposes. You know, the the first is you know the general public who come towards us, but it's also the technical folks who need information. As you may have heard from me before, um, planners we've worked with over the years have retired and we have new folks coming on and they don't teach LAFCO in college. So we, we have to do quite a bit of education and having good information on our site that will help them, whether it's how to do the map and legal description by Board of Equalization Standards or what we need down to you know what their CEQA requirements are. Those are all things that we can we, we can um, provide them technical information on. Not that we don't want to hear from folks. Um, we do like hearing from our applicants, but we want to hear that they have an understanding, at least a simple understanding before they come to us. So, yeah. No, uh, any other commissioner comments, questions? Blair, yeah, and Bud, I know your staff, good job on this, on the website. When I tell people, Commission I sit on, and they're like, what the heck is that, you know? One thing we did at McFarland, we had an internship, we hired these college grads that just got out of college, and they're doing our website, and they're just all over the place. It's awesome, but everybody's like, oh, man. But, you know, it's uh, the new generation. They, they're more hip to this techie stuff. But anyways, you, you, this you is can easy. actually make it too awesome so that it's hard to navigate. Yeah, I like this. This is slow and easy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was kind of the idea. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, moving on to uh, executive uh, officers' miscellaneous items. Knox, I'm tired, and I don't have a whole lot for this section. <laughs> uh, we've gone through a lot. I want to mention that we do have coming up the Calafco conference in 
uh, at Tenaya Lodge and um, the CSDA conference in Indian Wells coming up. If you haven't signed up or if you're the early bird is over, but we'll, we'll still pay for you. So um, if you are interested in going, uh, let Patty know and we'll continue to work on that. And um, do you have the dates where of those? Nine yeah. 12, September. Both 9. of them are, are they both at the same time? No. No. Oh. The special what? district is the ninth through the twelfth, right? That's These correct. The other ones, uh, October sixteenth, seventeenth, and eighteenth. Yes. That's that's how that goes. Yes. Yeah. So. Thanks. And uh, on, on the agenda is closed session, but I do not have anything to add to closed session. There has been no reportable movement on that project. So um, that's the end of my report. Okay. So moving on to 10, uh, do we have any other items for closed session or anything for closed session? We do not. Okay. All right. So that, that concludes. There's more items to discuss. Our, uh, that concludes our meeting for our next meeting, September 18th. Uh, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second, Fowler. Motion by Commissioner Couch, second by Commissioner Fowler. Madam Clerk, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Ione? Aye. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Commissioner Couch? Yes. Commissioner Fowler? Yes. Commissioner Flores? Yes. Commissioner McKibben? Yes. Commissioner Zaragoza? Aye. All ayes, motion passed. Thank you. Meeting adjourned, 6.05.